Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is Jonas Reporters for the 3rd of March, and I promised you volatility continuing to increase, and this is exactly what we're getting. So we talked about this. We had this little red line back here from our peak. We were looking for a retrace back here to the dip below the red line. That was going to be the full target range, and boom, we literally... We hit it like almost exactly, or what? Uh, we were pretty darn close. 53 and a quarter uh, was the number. Um, we had 67, so it went below uh, what our expectation was, just marginally, and then came right back up. And then you form what's called delta, re delta V reversal, where um, you end up with your hammer at the base of it and then usually in that next day you eclipse this high well you still have to come back up to this open level here at the 31 to uh, clear that we're really close to it uh, we came pre-market wise to the highs just underneath it so if it doesn't get over that real problem but as I was pointing out uh, even in pre-market we'd already eclipsed and gotten to the 23 and so I was like at the daily 23 that becomes your big number because above that, you can be long, but uh, if it's unable to get past it, not so much. And look at this beautiful setup here of steel crossing above science. So you got midterm buyer, uh, short term buyers here crossing the shorts. Shorts completely fading out of it. We knew that was happening anyway, because it's like I was saying back then yeah, I'm preparing to cover my short at this particular spot. Any coincidence that the market rebounds exactly at that particular point? No, because this is what the smart money does. And then all the other people who got scared and sold out and decided to short the market, well, they create the imbalance that allows this kind of run up because this is exactly what a short cover rally looks like. Um, we had similar things actually even happen in 2008. So you had these massive rallies coming back, but uh, the question really becomes, uh, is the longer term damage still there? And the fact is, when you look down the road, the cases in America for the coronavirus are multiplying exponentially, uh, as we've seen elsewhere. I mean, same for Italy and everything else. Uh, and then you've got this lovely situation where like here in Florence, uh, you had all of these students expatriated back to America the other day and lo and behold places like Massachusetts and you're gonna find a lot of this in the Northeast all of a sudden because a lot of these students are coming back from the Northeast and they may not be symptomatic but they could be infected um, and this is the exact uh, scenario because now you're starting to see people uh, uh, developing those cases and then you're gonna find that outbreaks throughout the Northeast on this because of uh, this kind of situation and so not a surprise and Again, I've told you the, the policy is really not about uh, stopping the illness. It's about slowing it as best they can so that they can both respond with health care providers, uh, making sure they have an adequate supply, which they've now had time to ramp up. And then secondarily, um, drug company coming up with the appropriate vaccine for it in enough time. And whoever does that, well, that's tens of billions of dollars uh, in the bank for whoever can come up with it first. So you know they're trying very hard to do that. So for us, it's easy. We've got the 38% right now as the new threshold. So 3061 becomes that uh, new level to be able to you know short from a broader standpoint because then you're looking at a move back down to the 23%. Uh, and then from there, a refill of the dip below the red line, which is what you see those dotted lines. That's representing that that's what the fill level would be. Now, for our Mars standpoints, we usually look for about 80% of uh, those uh, complete fill numbers when uh, generally talking about looking for a full positive retracement. If you've got the stones to be able to withstand it, you can certainly wait for the full 100%. But I found that's the most effective to begin to start. Uh, well, it depends on how large your position is, but I scale out uh, as I go through those. So, but you've seen me do that. Um, and it's important to be able to recognize, you know, where the market is going with these things. We had the full reset of the steel, so we knew there was likely to be some uh, buying capability. And now you got all new fund money coming in right at this particular point. That could be enough to break through the 50% level. So we'll see. But the NQ, okay, so here was our dotted line from this retrace from back before. Uh, it was really right there, because uh, it's the low right here. And that's the 8192 from our uh, ALGO setup of the below the red line. 
and uh, well we can see that we did blow that on the NASDAQ and so that was the broader one because the NASDAQ had been running the show for um, well the last months uh, because they led the lead up and of course uh, the fill so bingo on that uh, this was all they needed you know of course it's not a shock here we came to our you know little Maginot line here from an EU standpoint um, is there any justification for the EU euro to be rising? No, but the central banks got involved because they knew the critical nature of that line right there because uh, below that uh, it starts to look bleak. But is there any improvement in the EU situation? No, it's getting worse uh, in the EU. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, the dollar plunge uh, uh, was necessary to help uh, shore up, you know, exports and that for the U.S. And you can't fight the Fed. That's why we say go with it. You know, there's no no point in it. And people say, well, does the Fed actually buying securities? They don't have to. Uh, they can just provide free money to the hedge funds. This is, was the whole point of the blow up that we saw, and why they didn't really care about this decline because the whole blow up was just about the Fed providing repo money in the uh, market at the tune of a hundred billion dollars a day uh, to loan to hedge funds and that to buy securities because uh, they, they really want to push. I mean, this is the fight uh, Trump is having with the Fed. He wants to push towards negative rates to really fuel. Uh, growth in the U.S. economy. The problem is it does create uh, asset bubbles, and this is the reassessment of uh, the expectation that Trump's going to win that war with Powell, and that's why we're seeing this bump uh, now, despite the fact that you could have a severe economic situation, but the multiple of the market has to change. Uh, because if you move towards zero rates, where are you going to get yield? Well, the market's going to be the only place you're going to look for any place that you can get a dividend or uh, just any appreciation whatsoever. Uh, oil, the rebound, that's just off of the dead cat bounce here. Um, it's probably not going to be long lived uh, simply because of the damage here from the shakeout below that negative 13.5. Uh, even a pop up here, you still have to pass again that 23%, and that becomes that golden marker to look for. Um, you know, it was an interesting question. I thought I'd point this out. You know, uh, sometimes people want to match their charts to mine. Uh, sometimes when you open a trade station chart, you're not going to get the uh, exact same date. So what I do is I have a first date for my daily here. It starts in 2003. For the tick charts, I'll show you that one in a second. It varies a little bit because sometimes if you don't have the right configuration, you're going to get a variation off of uh, comparison to what my charts are. And um, here from a, the oil standpoint too, we still don't have a reset of the steel. Yes, we came back down below. Move back up. If it moves above 13.5, again, that's the equivalent of it coming from underneath, which would uh, maintain its bullishness. And that dip below the uh, red line of the orange is critical for giving that a uh, little bit more sustained move. So we'll see if it's able to keep that up. Uh, the gold retracement on DOC spread, that was just because it got to the extreme. I mean, when you get uh, red DOC over 13.5, you know that it isn't going to last very long. And we have these positive extremes that needed to fill. Um, that was this one right here. And we had a little carry through on it, which happened to go perfectly to the Morganacci 50%. And that's kind of where we're fluctuating now. The fact that you're not seeing steel pop up over this negative 13.5, uh, this is still a downside carry for gold. So uh, that could be the liquidation because, you know, again, equities uh, become the you know new place to be. So from an intraday standpoint, uh, so easy. Why didn't I have that one marked? Because this is so clean. I actually had it marked on the other chart that I posted more than 5K. So, from this standpoint, if we look at the format symbol setup, important to have to count uh, when creating your bars. I always do five years back and never get five years. I, you know, when I had, I had the reboot take place, even on my 50K, I used to have like three or four years uh, built in my cache. Uh, but when it rebooted, it didn't, and it's just not even possible to get uh, accurate, uh, at least long-term data you put in for downloading, and it doesn't happen, but that's okay. So we had talked about these different uh, setup lines. We were getting up here at the peak, and I was looking for a um, 94 retrace. And that was coming off of uh, the initial breakout setup here. And then we started getting these DLC spreads. Uh, the initial one coming off the super high peak, you know that one's gonna be short live because you're coming off the uh, plus 15 here. What you're looking for is the matching highs on the lower shakeout. And we know that that tends to give us a little bit more of what we wanted. 
Uh, it started to break down, didn't couldn't quite break below that 3008 at the beginning, but then we ended up with the another DOC. And you know, this is one of those uh, ones where I'm careful with this one because I'm looking at the fact that I've got a steel reset here. Um, I had rising gold, but then it starts to plateau, and that's exactly what I'm looking for when this goes across. And the fact that it stayed below the 61% at that particular point, uh, I was feeling good about that. And unable to get the steel, you see the so critical steel crossing above uh, at that particular point above uh, cyan would have been the buy because you would have been then expecting the orange to dip below and green crossover didn't happen. That's what extended the dip right to the target of the 94. And then sure enough, at that point, you then did get the crossover, which is why we ended up with our P2 pivots, uh, because we started to make an improvement. You had a little pivot up here, and then boom. And even if you waited before uh, to the red DOC broke the negative 13.5, would have just been a couple bars over. Um, and often those, you get the little bounce, and it comes back to it. That's so typical for uh, uh, the long setup. And that began um, new buy setup. Towards the end of the day, but just boom, look at that, just following it cleanly. So we broke below uh, above the next set of algos, and that's when we started bouncing between them. And so you had the 100% line mixed in with that uh, 3063 algo, and we just kind of fluctuated back and forth across that to where we are here. And literally, we had to fill you know, this whole set of positive extremes. Uh, which were very close to the previous algo level right here. Uh, they actually extend back, well, we have it uh, right here in between, another one at the 3038, which will be one to add. In fact, we should just do that while we're here. Color it correctly. And we just want to find the low of that corrected bar. There it goes. Now, if you want to do that precisely, you can click snap mode, and then if you just touch the low, so you just click it. The, the only problem with that is you have to be careful that uh, later on you move it, because every time you move a uh, chart or the mouse or anything else, um, it'll it'll go to snap mode. That's not always convenient, so there we go. So that fills in that one, and then we had another previous single one. It was right in between here. Uh, which can be an additional one at the 27, and that's not bad because there's still pretty good ranges, but I keep putting all these on here, we're going to have so many, but um, they're still relevant, and it's important to have them uh, so that you can see it. Uh, but critical here, what we're seeing is you're back at these highs, look at how much weaker our shakeout is, so that the enthusiasm and the amount of uh, interest within this has simply waned. Uh, this was so perfect because, you know, of course, cyan under red, always a buy, so that's easy enough. Uh, but then once we uh, transitioned right through here, we started to get these breakups and downs of the steel, uh, and we're still fighting with you know, cyan moving underneath. But now we've reached into sort of a non-reset period across here, which is what led to the weakness. Um, but then we regained it right now, so we're still fluctuating back and forth. So I think it's possible that even if we get to that 3109, that's where we may see some... Uh, breakdown because again we're already still lower shakeout it's still it's rising histogram though so until that actually starts to move lower um, we're still on the up mode and um, it's potentially possible that uh, we make it up to that 50 that 50 percent that's just a question of uh, whether or not uh, those that flipped like me to the other side of it uh, are willing to get back into it the other way we're going to see that first because it's going to show up for us uh, both here on the 5k will be the earliest indication then on 50k and we'll be able to go down the road from there so piece of cake all good i uh, went a little long here uh, definitely be on the skype chat back and forth as always though trade well